open up a tab, grab a seat, and pour a pint. It's time for the Beer Guys Radio Show. You want free beer? Go to the brewery. Dedicated to the art, science, and enjoyment of craft beer. Yeah, what's wrong with the beer we got? Now, here are your hosts, Tim Dennis and Aaron Williams. And welcome to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We are radio for the local craft beer movement, broadcasting live this time from Orpheus Brewing in Atlanta, Georgia. And I'm Aaron Williams. And I'm Tim Dennis, and we've got the man Brian Hewitt with us as well. Brian, how are you doing this week? I am doing well, thanks. Very good. As Aaron mentioned, we are at Orpheus Brewing. We're going to talk to brewmaster and owner Jason Pellet. Jason, thanks for joining us. Uh, thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. Absolutely. So uh, we are... Um, Basically, just kind of hanging out, drinking some great beers. Yeah, we've and we're gonna. Chat. We've been chatting. It's good. It's a good yeah. chat. It's it's enjoyable. So now we'll do it officially on the radio. So, uh, you guys took a trip though this week. Uh, so tell us a little oh, bit about did. what you guys yeah. did. So yeah. We're, you know, we have a quest. Maybe we. I don't know if we've announced this on the show yet. Mm-hmm. So we have a quest to hit every brewery in Georgia in 2018, and uh, we're doing pretty good on it. Brian and I usually do do the runs together. So it was uh, a quest that I had. Brian decided he'd tag along for that. That's a as good well. quest. So. Yeah. I'm at 22 breweries so far this year in Georgia. I don't think that's bad for February. Brian, I think you're set, you said you're at 28, right? I believe it's 28 at yeah, this point. So yeah, it's a little ahead of me. But as part of our ever, Every Brewery in Georgia tour, uh, we did North Georgia last weekend, and we went to Dalton, and we went to Rock Spring, and we visited uh, Phantom Horse Brewing up in Rock Spring. We came down and visited Cherokee Brewing and Pizza in Dalton, as well as Dalton Brewing Company. And we also ran into the folks at Dalton Distillery and went over there and uh, sampled some of their sunflower spirits, Tazza Ray. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Okay. So we made the rounds. It was a good time. Definitely. And Brian and I, of course, we were at Red Brick uh, the other day, too. So We were, yeah. We, we, we met each other and uh, had a little Red Brick date. For like the, the 45th uh, Hype Whale release, <laughs> I think is what it was. <laughs> exactly. Well, you know, the funny thing is, is that, uh, you know, we're talking about this. I- I've been to Red Brick more in the past three weeks than I have, like, really in the past couple of years or so, because uh, they're just such great beers that are coming out right now. Uh, it's awesome to see. They are absolutely killing it. Yeah, uh, that Hype Whale, people can't get enough of it. They're lining up before they open. That's, I you know, haven't seen that happen at Red Brick in a while. Hence the name Hype Whale, I guess. That's, uh, that's how it it's goes. It's good. That's, that Neapolitan was excellent. That, okay. That we I'm a fan of the so. Hawaiian one, but, uh, but yeah, the and, and the Neapolitan, it's okay. Oh, that Hawaiian. I'm just, oh, yeah. I'm just kidding. It's I've got a bottle of Mayan, which I don't think I've tried at all. Mayan is good too. So we'll see. We'll see. Exactly. We'll see. Definitely. Well, cool. Let's check out this week's Truck and Taps beers of the week. Crack open the cold one. It's the Truck and Tap beer of the week. Craft beer and food trucks in downtown Woodstock. Truckandtap.com. Okay, what do we got, Tim? We have a lot of good stuff this week. We, of course, are going to be drinking plenty of Orpheus beers. I started off uh, light with the Abandon All Hope, uh, 13.9% stout. Yeah, good plan. Uh, we've got some uh, Sycophantes Blanc that we're going to get into, quite a few others. Jason, what do you recommend? What are we going to be drinking today? Uh, we have, uh, so we actually have Blackberry Noise and Flesh in bottles about to be released, so we'll open one of those bottles. Perfect. Uh, okay. We have, we just did a blend of one, two, and three-year-old spontaneous cool shit beer. Uh, that'll be bottled in just next early next week so that's sitting in the tank now so we'll pull some of that out Fantastic. try that before it gets carbonated twist my arm yeah. sounds good we just drank a real special beer for those that remember yeah, our did. friend dan rosen uh dan passed away tragically about a year ago and there was a beer that was brewed collaboration between several different brewers at wild heaven they called to dan mm-hmm. it was a coconut ipa uh nick purdy was kind enough to give us one of 24 bottles 24 bottles total yeah. of the to dan that they aged in rum barrels courtesy of alan rains and uh, it's a really tasty beer, so we're drinking that and reminiscing about hanging and drinking beers with our buddy Dan Rose. Yeah, definitely a good, uh, good, good way to reminisce them. And, Absolutely. Uh, you know, that's, that's, that's good for him. Good so. stuff. All right, let's check out, uh, speaking of good stuff, by the way, let's check out uh, Brian's headline. What's in the news? The beer guys have the scoop. Extra, extra, read all about it. Time for headlines. Now, I'm not sure if they're actually your headlines, but they're called from sources. They, they, they come from the Internet, and then I, I have aggregated them. Gotcha. Yes. There you go. So Brian's As aggregated headlines. I did not so. write any of these. That's true. There you go. So craftbeer.com has published their annual list of the best beers, beer bars in America. And for us in Georgia, River Street Tavern in LJ is that bar. Okay. I, I, I don't think I've ever been to it. I want to go now, though. I, I, yeah, so. I do as well. Reportedly, 21 taps and 31 bottle or canned options are available to you. And some highlights for our affiliates around the uh, the country... Lusa Brew in Tuscaloosa, uh, mm-hmm. one for Alabama, 
the Bulldog Uptown in New Orleans, one for Louisiana. Beer Station in Kansas City, one for Missouri. North Jetty Brewing in Seaview, one for Washington. Very think, cool. Yeah. Nice. Lots of great beer bars out there. Definitely. So a, a cool story that combines you know, history, beer collaborations, and charity. Uh, members of the Alabama Brewers Guild have collaborated on a new Capital Series beer called Duffy's Tavern Strong Ale. It's named after a historic inn and political headquarters in Tuscaloosa. And Tuscaloosa was one of Alabama's capitals in the 19th century. So it was designed after an old English ale from the ni- mid-19th century, and uh, the proceeds will go to Tuscaloosa's County Preservation Society. Tremble and fear, mere mortals. Uh-oh. North Korea has made a new ale. Uh-oh. <laughs> is it the best ale ever? It is better than existing beer, and that's a quote. Of course. Absolutely. Well, it's got to be. You know, it's, yeah. So reportedly, they use an exclusive new brewing technique that makes it taste and smell better than any beer ever brewed before. <laughs> There is no information on exactly what that technique might be. I suspect a cool ship. I but suspect hype. <laughs> yeah. Yes, <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, uh, the brewery is, is produced in, by Tae Dong Gang, a brewery that was created in 2015 because the, the dear leader was annoyed that Polliner would not set up a German-style beer garden. I actually remember hearing yeah. that story that he was bothered by that. <laughs> so there's been a, uh, a bunch of BrewDog in the news lately. Uh, they opened a, uh, a beer hotel in Scotland, and I've gotten this article forwarded to me like several times this week. Okay. So I definitely have to cover this. 26 rooms. Each will have beer taps in them. They will have a built-in shower beer fridge in each room, and they will overlook the uh, BrewDog headquarters. This is, of course, in Scotland, and it will be opening mid-2019. But if that's too far away for you... Wait a little while. Later in the year, they will have a Columbus, Ohio they are beer hotel. One. I was going to ask if Columbus would get one. All right. So, yep. so, so note to BrewDog, we can be bought if you want to send us up there. Sure. For, exactly. Yeah, and they were the actually going to open the Columbus one first, but they had something happen with the land in Scotland. They had to move on it. And on top of that, they're also giving away a million beers to convert new craft beer drinkers. They're Punk IPA. So you basically go to a website – Give them your information. They send you an email that's good for a pint. You have to take it into one of their 50 uh, brew pubs around. Into the, their brew yeah, pubs. Okay, yeah. gotcha. All right. So on the, the heel of last week's news about German athletes drinking non-alcoholic Hefeweizens after working out and saying that's what makes them so gr- uh, great, Evil Twin is brewing a beer for athletes. It's called Race Day. So it's a collaboration between Evil Twin and Sam Anderson, the brev- beverage director of the popular New York eatery, Mission Chinese Food, and they're describing it as the Gatorade of beers. Okay. So it's a sour IPA brewed with pineapple, aloe vera, and electro- electrolytes derived from aloe salt, whatever that is. So there's no I- details on the ABV yet, but we do know it has what plants crave. It's I was going to uh, say, we should name it Brondo. We should name it, yeah, definitely There Brondo. we go, Brondo. It's, it's got I bet you somebody's already got a beer named Dwayne Camacho, Alessandro Johnson there to uh, <laughs> That's right. endorse to, it, to, right? To endorse it, yeah. So Dogfish Head is bottling a new batch of chicha beer. And if you're not familiar with what that is, that is the beer made by chewing up uh, maize or a purple corn and using the saliva and the enzymes to help ferment it. Of course, it's, it's uh, boiled after that after, to, to sanitize it, but... Uh, yeah, so they're putting it in bottles. I'm going to call that the worst job for an intern ever. Yeah, well, they get the they get they the get entire the whole the whole crew. I know I saw the video the last <laughs> time they did it. They chewing. just got everybody involved. Really yeah, right. it's sixty people were chewing on this. Yeah, and they're they're chewing it and they're spitting these chewed up corn into big vats. And they it's like throughout the the day and the week, everybody's got a bucket of corn on their table. And they're just I don't want to drink that beer. I, 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 I it's yeah. not a beer I would drink. Now I know. You know, we boil it, we sanitize it, we do all this ancient traditions and methods. Jason, would you drink a yeah. mouth chewed chicha? Of course I would. You would? Yeah, That's, I would say, I say Jason's if down I, for that. I yeah. figured he would. I mean, if I go to a Chinese restaurant and eat pig anus. You know, yeah. there you, you go. don't have to eat that. They have other <laughs> stuff. On you, so. you I wasn't eat? aware that was an option. <laughs> Sir, would you like the pork belly? <laughs> Can I get a little further south? <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> You're listening to Beer Guys Radio. We need to take a break to stock up on Chinese food, and uh, we'll be back right after this. Craft beer forged with a reverence for tradition and new styles that start a revolution. Ironmonger Brewing. The brewers at Ironmonger Brewing pride themselves at being masters of barrel-aged, hoppy, and sour beers. They invite you to their taproom in Marietta to taste and see. Also, visit their barrel room 
with an intimate drinking experience with great live entertainment. Keep up to date on all things Ironmonger by liking them on Facebook. Ironmonger Brewing, establishing a new standard in craft beer. It's Aaron and Tim, the beer guys. If you're like us, no lunch or dinner is complete without a pint or two of craft beer. Which is why Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock and Alpharetta are always on our list. Tim, why do they call it Truck and Tap? Well, the tap part is easy, Aaron. See, they've got 18 of them. As for the truck part, well, that's when it gets interesting. Truck and Tap features your favorite Atlanta area food trucks daily, so that way you're getting a different menu every day. Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock, Alpharetta, and coming soon to Duluth in 2018. Truckandtap.com. Let them know that the beer guys sent you. Follow the Beer Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Strange things are afoot at the Circle K. Now, back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. And welcome back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. BeerGuysRadio.com is our website, and of course, we're on the socials as well. We are live at Orpheus Brewing in Atlanta, Georgia. Brewmaster and owner Jason Pellet joins us in, not the studio, but here live at Orpheus Brewing today. In the barrel room. In the barrel room, that's right. So very very privileged to be there. So Jason, again, thanks for joining us today. Appreciate it. Thanks for being here. Definitely. So Jason, uh, we talked to you, I guess, maybe two years ago. You were on one of our earlier shows. Yeah. Pretty early shows. Continuing to grow, rocking and rolling, making beer. It's it's pretty crazy here. I don't know if you all walked around when you got here, but you can't really walk around anymore. No, we didn't this time, but we were here for your Super Bowl event not too long ago. We brought three more tanks in since. Since then, Since then, even, huh? Wow. How about it? Yeah, good. I remember when you first opened, uh, there was a picture that got circulated on the Internet recently with you in it. I think it was put in a news article. And you you didn't even have all your tanks down on the floor by your oh, brew house yeah. at that time. So Yeah, so this, I mean, so our, our main production floor is totally full. Um, we actually just stuck some 25-barrel tanks, which we, we, never, we actually didn't have any tanks that small before, so but we didn't have any room where the tall ceiling is so which is well we can get some smaller tanks do small projects so we just kind of crammed them in the middle of right when you walk in the back you Put know where you can right exactly you know and it's amazing kind of kind of picking back backing off of that is that the georgia beer scene has grown so much i mean again we're on our third year just starting our third year of the show uh, two years ago when we started the show uh, you know we were wondering if we were going to be able to have enough brewers and a rough talk but now we're chock full you know and it seems like there's a new brewery open every week um older breweries older breweries are expanding and it's just really cool things are happening uh, you know across the entire state now that kind of things have opened up oh it's so exciting yeah and this is and and we were kind of worried you know the the laws change september 1st and september is always the beginning of our down season in the tasting room Mm -hmm. and so kind of after a good september with the law changes then it dropped off like it normally does so it became really hard to compare it's like did these laws did the new laws hurt us yeah which in a way i still like the fact that i could go from you know, um, the tour situation and kind of limited options as far as what we would put on tap to be able to control the, you mm-hmm. know, experience more, have more, way more barrel aged beers on tap. But, you know, it was the number of people was way down. But then the last two Saturdays, it's been like 650, 700 people, which is. Yeah, what, what, what it always used to be. So. And, and, and you know, people kind of it takes a little bit of time for folks to get used to, to what's going on, because you're also the, used to the old tour and tour and ticket system. Oh, all of a sudden I have to pay this much more, but then you're like, oh, wait a minute, you get used to it and kind of come back. And yeah, there is definitely the first few weeks there was a lot of excitement around the new stuff, and then there was there was a couple months of people kind of wishing the old system was back before they really they hadn't really grasped how how much good came from the new system mm-hmm. yet. It was just that they couldn't pay 14 bucks and get wasted. Yeah, exactly. Which you know, I mean, it has its place. I've been there many a times. But, well, some breweries have. Uh done a throwback to that where they'll yeah. do certain nights they still do their tours or they may still offer that as an i think terrapin still does that you know mm-hmm. because there's a lot of college kids that really get kind of you know christened into craft beer through terrapin and they don't want to spend more than oh well heck yeah bucks, i mean if right? i was a, if i was a college student you sure. just told me 12 bucks for six beers i'm down count me in second, right exactly. absolutely and, and we did start doing after months of not doing flights we did start doing flights which it end, ends up being close to what the mm-hmm. old you know ticketed system get got you in keeping the calendar, I've noticed that in addition to those throwback days, there's also a lot of pint days where they're like three days. or four dollar yeah. pints. Well, you see those springing up because, well, you know they can. Yeah, I mean, I'll say we get a lot of. We tried some of that. We got a lot of pushback from bars. Sure, doing the cheaper beers, and it's yeah. kind of a catch twenty two because I mean, you technically probably could because, of course, it's direct from the brewery, but you don't want to bite the hand that fed you for so many years. Yeah, with and they the brewery. Yeah. I mean, you know, we we. 
for us, the big thing about the tasting room is just the experience. It's like, this is the mm -hmm. only place you can get a lot of our beers and, or at least the only place you can easily get a lot of the barrel aged stuff. So, you know, abandon all the hope we've had basically on tap ever since the laws changed, 12th mm -hmm. labor, um, stuff like that. And so it's like, we want people to be able to come here and experience that more than like undercut the places sure. that actually sell way more of our beer. So Jason, tell us how Zen and the art of motorcycle maintenance helps you deal with the day-to-day -day of operating a brewery. Oh my God. Did we talk about that last time? We, we didn't. Did. I think that's Aaron's question. I, did I a think Aaron research. did his research I'm doing here. Some research here. <laughs> that is a cool I should have let Aaron like that ask book. that question, but that's all good. That's, uh, we're just flowing before. through okay. here. Okay. So yeah, so so Aaron's done his homework and he knows you got a little Zen going on over here. All right, so I haven't actually thought about that book in a long time. Um, that book in about just a few things actually, kind of the quality in certain ways is just an entity unto itself and certain, mm -hmm. like not just subjective, there's actual quality. Um, the, just because that you don't recognize it doesn't mean it's not there. You may not know about it. If you're not a scholar of medieval English poetry, you're not gonna know what medieval English English poems are actually any good that doesn't mean there's not some objective quality there mm -hmm. and so it's like that uh, like that Socrates you know what is good Phaedrus and what is not good need we ask anyone to, need we ask anyone to tell us these things and it's you know there's a lot of things it's like there's this sense of quality that it's just there you, you can't you know you can't get away from that so always try to keep that in mind and then just uh, one thing he always talks about is just gumption and gumption traps. And gumption is just, you know, this willingness to just go forward when there's something difficult in the way, you know, whether he was talking about in the, in the context of like you're fixing a motorcycle and it's like you just can't get a nut off. Yeah. And so eventually, you know, if you keep working at it, it'll get there. Um, and so, you know, running the brewery is like that constantly. It's like this pump doesn't work. And the first time I ran into a pump didn that didn't work, it was, it was the first. I didn't know how pumps worked. I had to yeah. take one apart. And well, well, for those who don't know, Jason, you've got a musical background, not a mechanical background. Too, right. So, so it's, um, yeah, every, everything here was new. I just mm -hmm. had to kind of approach everything with the thought that's like, if I just think through every aspect of this, I'll get there. Mm-hmm. And Jason, you know, speaking of the musical background, you do a lot of uh, artistic stuff. I mean, we've talked ancient English poetry and mythology. I'm just going to sit here, here drinking beer and just, uh, just soaking so, in Jason's. Uh, and I, I definitely think if we need reference on that, we're going to have to turn to you on okay. most of it. But uh, your names, your artwork, your beers, a lot of that are inspired by mythology. So um, how, why why mythology? Why that theme? Uh, you know. It really came down to originally that I loved the name Orpheus. So there, there was a jazz standard, an old Boston Nova tune called Black Orpheus, and I just always loved the name of that. And so I didn't even know the mythology. I never knew a whole lot of mythology growing up. Somehow missed those classes or whatever. Yeah. Um, so, but when I was trying to name the brewery, trying to come up with something like different than the normal brewery names, that just came to me, and I looked it up for the first time after loving the way that sounded for like 15 years. I was like, oh, I can deal. That's a story that I can deal with. And so, you know, ever since then, it's just been going down rabbit holes of Wikipedia and, yeah. you know, wherever the internet leads me. Where can I go with me. this, right? Yeah. yeah. So, okay. so it's fun to think about that, you know, and then tie the art in, which is, you know, just looking for different artists that do something that's really cool that I can just trust to say, hey, here's this theme, here's a name for a beer, just do something great, and whatever you come up with is going to go on the label. Yeah, and speaking of labels, you have made a slight redesign to your labels, too, and they're just much more bigger and bolder. They're, they're, they're really on point. They do, they're, they're beautiful. Oh, thank actually. you. Yeah, yeah, so we just, uh, that, that's for the new seasonal stuff. Core mm -hmm. stuff is staying the way it was. We just wanted a way to make the seasonal beers stand out as, you know, seasonal. Mm-hmm. Sorry, you caught me a mid-drink there. I'm sorry about that. So. It does make him pop. There, huh? It does, they, yeah. They are very poppy. <laughs> it's yeah, really absolutely. Good. Now, how, how important is the artwork to you, to your beers? To me, it's super important to... I, I've never actually known the right answer for how important it is, you know, to other people being bought, but for mm -hmm. me, it's very personal. Like, we... Uh, I've actually been... Finally got uh, approval today that I've been working on for months to get a Margaret Atwood quote 
on our nice. next can. Okay. Um, which is like, I'm just paying for that out of my own pocket just to get the license because it's to like, get it done. I yeah. care. The br- like, realistically, every single can of Plants Have No Memories, which is our like spring uh, white wine grape sour that's, this is the new beer. Um, it's all going to sell whether this quote is on there or not. I just want it on there. Awesome. So. Yeah. We need to take a quick break. You're listening to the Beer Guys Radio Show from Orpheus Brewing in Atlanta, Georgia. Come check us out at BeerGuysRadio.com. We'll be back right after this. We are Reformation Brewery, celebrating the reformer in you. Locally crafted within the renowned Etowa watershed of Woodstock, Georgia, Reformation creates yeast-forward brews full of aroma and flavor crafted to last. Come see us in beautiful Woodstock, Georgia, for a tour and tasting of unique brews that you can't find anywhere else. Reformation Brewery. Set beer free. ReformationBrewery.com. Follow the Beer Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. To be the man, you gotta beat the man. Woo! Now, back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. Welcome back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We are here at Orpheus talking with Jason Pellet about all things Orpheus beer. And we're drinking some of his Orpheus beer as well. We are. This he is- brought out one that hasn't even been released yet. Jason said he doesn't have labels for it, but we got a little little preview. Blackberry Noise and Flesh That's right. in the bottles. Uh, tell us about this beer, Jason. So this so Noise and Flesh is actually kind of our house beer. Uh, it's a barrel-aged beer that we started doing it um, back, well, Back when uh, we couldn't sell beer by the glass here, had to do like tour ticket system. Mm-hmm. I still wanted a barrel aged beer on tap for those people. And so this started off as like a beer that only spent a few months in barrels. So I would just, you know, let that happen. Um, and so kept that on tap. So this particular batch actually though, we uh, aged in port barrels for a while longer and then re-fermented on top of a ridiculous amount of Georgia blackberries. So you get some of that. The port barrels are a little bit musky and funky. I do uh, get that. Yes, definitely get absolutely. that. Plus, you know, lots of fruit, yeah. which is what the kids want, right? That's well, it. The, the kids love up, the fruit. Man. Sour exactly. and fruit. So I get the name now. It's so it's a it's for the it's a house beer effectively, yeah. So a really packed brewery. When you get in here, and there's a ton of people in here, a lot of noise, a lot of flesh, lot of flesh. and it's just noise all you're flesh. pressing flesh against yeah, and trying it. to yell to get Brian your beer. You know, that's girl. one way to look at it. The Let's other see. way is that it's in a Margaret Atwood poem about uh, more Margaret Atwood about you know uh, <laughs> about Orpheus, uh, him going down to the underworld to retrieve Eurydice, his dead wife, from her perspective of not wanting to get pulled back into this world of noise and flesh. Oh. Multiple so layers so of meaning. It's a beer that you can tell a story. Right? That's actually really cool when you can take the name of a beer and it, you know expand it into and, a and story, knew, education. I, you know, you, you know, when you listen to the Beer Guys radio show, you not only learn right. about craft beer, you also get a literature education. We are cultured <laughs> up in here. Exactly. This episode you can comes get grants. with a free diploma. <laughs> you can good. get grants for that. Uh, oh, I know. Yeah. That's good stuff. Like- so, Jason, we're enjoying your noise and flesh. Blackberry here. You do a lot of sour beers. Now, you've got uh, Transmigration of Souls, IPA, mm-hmm. a staple, very popular beer. You do stouts, barrel aged stouts and that. Uh, but you were one of the first in the Atlanta area to really, you know, step into sours. And if I remember correctly, the first brewery in Georgia to can a sour beer? The first to put it in any packaging at all. Any packaging at all. Yep. How about that? That was Atalanta. So. I mean, not by a whole lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, I think Athena was in cans within a month or two of Atalanta. But, yeah, so we, you know, the Creature Comforts guys and me, you know, starting around the same time. And all of us really into sours, and that's... You know, that's why I wanted to open a brewery, actually. That's why I got into home brewing was just, I was a trumpet player. Sours were expensive on a trumpet player's budget. Okay. So yeah. I, uh, I wanted to brew them myself. Okay. And then I was like, you know, I want other people to have this. So I had this goal early on of, like, having an affordable sour. And so that's where Atalanta came into play. And, and, and what is it about sours for you? Um, a few things. You know, it's, for one, you know, just acid is nice. Um, but just, you know, it's just Timothy one. Leary agrees, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Right. um, just, it's one other, you know, layer to play with, you mm-hmm. know, um, just when you're thinking about all the different flavors in the world, you know, it's, 
yeah, it's just something else. You know, we, we make a lot of beers that are considered sours that aren't actually super sour. You know, Minotaur and mm-hmm. some, you know, that's a, a whiskey barrel aged sour. Um, but it's just, yeah, one more component. And so the first sour that I had, uh, Duchess, March 18th, 2009. Um, there you go. Wow. All right. You're coming that up on light, That is a great say, beer, you're and up I'd on an like that you remember soon. it that well. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's going to be a party. Okay. All right. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Day of the Duchess. Now, uh, speaking of, of the Sours Night, Jason, uh, you and I have talked some, and you like, like you mentioned, this is port barrel. There's a muskiness to mm-hmm. it. You know, there's some uh, earthiness, muskiness yeah. to it with the fruit. You like some some funk, some, you know, dirt in, in I your definitely, sours. I like funk um, and that, that, I definitely like that, yeah, that, uh, you know, horse blanket, earthy type character. And when, when I'm looking at, you know, in the whole wild realm, I way prefer that to super acidic. You know, for me, I shy away from super, you know, pain, if, if it's painfully acidic, I don't want it. Right. I'm not going to put it out. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, actually, the blackberry noise and flesh is getting close. It's right mm-hmm. there, yeah. Um, pretty, pretty but, tart. But for right. me, I can still drink a fair amount of this and enjoy it. And so, yeah, it's on the right side of the line, but getting there. You know, it's yeah. funny because sours have so much so much of a range. And mm-hmm. you can have something that's very tart like this. But then, you know, you get that feety, cheesy, horse blanket type of thing. And, I, and I'll tell my friends who aren't necessarily into craft beer as much. It's like, it's like try this Degard. It's fantastic. It's got feet, horse blanket. And they're like, are you kidding me? <laughs> like, I don't want to drink any of that. And right. I'm like, it's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, and there's different kinds of cheesy. Yeah. It's like you can have, you can have some pretty... Like the more bacterial led cheesiness um, they get from some, especially like kettle sours, that's pretty terrible in all contexts. Mm-hmm. You know, what I really like though is lambic style aged top cheesiness. So, speaking of which, we actually did just do our first blend of one, two, and three year old spontaneous turbid mash aged top Method cool ship. Yeah, pretty so, much. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So that's, uh, we're going to bottle that, yeah, in a few days. And so that's, you know, we're actually doing a lot with those, with those cool shit beers right now. We have uh, some two-year-old cool shit beers sitting on raspberries right now and picking up some green strawberries next week. And so lots of stuff. So we've been sitting on that stuff. We started that September 2014. Haven't released a single barrel of any of it, but it's this year about to start coming out. about there, huh? You mentioned green strawberries. Why do you go with green strawberries? Um, you know, red strawberries are really weird to work with. Um, they, they, you can get uh, some uh, kind of rubbery character from, a lot of people think it's from the seeds. Um, it's actually kind of up in the air right now exactly what causes that. But um, the green strawberries, you get the strawberry flavor, you get the acid, and it just ends up being a Sorry. slightly more pleasant strawberry character okay because right. i mean whether it's green or ripe the the, the sugar is going to ferment out well that's what i was going to say even the ones that i've had that have said hey with r- fresh ripe strawberries they tend to taste kind of like a green strawberry you know you get all the the sugar out of there and it, t- it has a similar taste so does that kind of eliminate some of the s- headaches and still get you to the same place uh, pr- yeah pretty much so it it, it uh, limits the possible off flavors that are really hard to avoid like I actually have done one red strawberry beer I really liked um, like homebrew scale we actually had that at the uh, our grand opening you know, our first beers we sent to market at the porter had that and tried a few more batches here and dumped every single one of them because <laughs> it just the strawberry character just ends up being really weird when you ferment right. it so, so- they, what are the off the the off uh, flavors that you kind get out of a strawberry band aid? Okay, yeah, and I've had yeah. that before too. Sometimes with the strawberry beer, I have gotten I that out of. I know some it's of really them. tough. I'm not a brewer by any means, but I know it's really tough to kind of get that. Uh, Which flavor is bad because I love the taste. Me too. Like in a sour, yeah. you know, certain beers, fresh sweet strawberries are pretty nice in there. Mm-hmm. So yeah, definitely. So yeah, so sorry, we were drinking beers. So Brian and I were distracted drinking beers and opening them. So, drinking, so I do appreciate drinking, that. Doing we that, were so. talking strawberries over here. I know it's very here. exciting. Actually. Jason, I have a, an important question for you that's been a hot topic in the local beer chat rooms here in Atlanta. We've been discussing cool ships. Oh yeah. So cool ships and those those unaware, there is uh, Monday Night Brewing has a cool ship they call their Crunk Ship. Mm-hmm. And uh, when it was first announced from both Monday Night and another local beer media, they said Georgia's first cool ship. 
Now, uh, there's been a little debate because technically Monday night does have what looks like a cool ship. They've got a cool ship room. They've got all this stuff together. But looking it up, that doesn't necessarily you've – been, you've been cool shipping for a little while, We right? have been. I mean, we okay. use uh, actually a pair of old dairy tanks, open-topped, which we use for actually a wide variety of things. They're, uh, you can actually fill them up. If you fill them up, you can fit about 20 barrels in each. When we use them as cool ships, way less. We fill them pretty shallow. So, you know, and it's – I mean, that, that's American brewing tradition is oh, yeah. take some dairy tanks and – you know. Sure. You got to rig it. Exactly. Yeah. Sometimes. That's great. So maybe we need cool ship and cooler ship. Like the one that looks cooler is the cooler ship, but then. No, that's the crunk make, ship. That's the crunk ship. ship. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm already I'm confused sorry. about this. That's it. So. There's too many terms already. I, right. I, I take that back. Hey, we're going to take a quick break right now. You listen to the Beer Guys Radio Show, beerguysradio.com. We'll be back right after this. Time for the hot list. The beer guys have the scoop on what you need to know for next week. That's hot. And all kinds of awesome stuff in Georgia happening this week. On Sunday, we have Sweetwater's Smokeout with Big Green Egg. From the Earth Brewing is hosting a paddle on the hooch. Go down there, paddle the hooch for a little while, then go back to From the Earth for some beers and a bite to eat. On Monday, it is $3 Monday at Eventide and Cinco de Siberias at Wrecking Bar at 7 p.m. On Tuesday, Reformation hosts Reform Riders Meeting. All you riders go out there, have some beer, and uh, listen to a little lecture there. So there we also have Wades and Smyrna hosting a Wild Heaven Tap takeover on Wednesday. It is craft beer, wine, and cheese pairing at Tap and Six in Roswell. And Chai Pani or Panai, I don't know if I'm I think saying that Panay. right. Chez Panay. Chez Panay. I think that's what it is, yes. But anyhow, they're having a beer dinner to benefit the Giving Kitchen. So go check that out. On Thursday, there are just a ton of events for International Women's Day. We have the uh, Lady Marmalade release at Monday Night Brewing. And there's also events at Urban Tree, Reformation, and Red Hair. Check your brewery and see if they're doing something as well. On Friday, we have three taverns releasing Morning Smack in cans, which is very nice. Wrecking Bar is releasing cans of their Tampa Timeshare Grapefruit Basil Goza. Orpheus is hosting a Showing the Fig release party with seasonal beers, including, I think we got uh, Sycophante, Sycophante's Black, Maynard's Dichotomy. Is that right, Jason? You seem surprised by that He has no idea what's going on. I don't know. Okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> you might want to check that one out, man. You may want to be there for that. That sounds so. awesome. Yes. <laughs> then on Saturday, there are over 20 events across the state of Georgia. Wow. So just a few that you might want to check out. Burnt Hickory's Digits Day, Digits Returns. Check it out. We have Secret Stash Bash at Taco Mac Prado. Service Brewing's Craft Brew Race is over in Savannah. Hattie Bees is having a hot chicken pop-up at Sweetwater. Hattie Bees is coming to Atlanta this oh, yeah. year. Oh, so. yeah. But they're doing a little popping up there with some hot chicken. Hopsticks has their first anniversary, and there is also a couple bottle releases at Monday Night Garage. For a full list of events and everything... For a full list of events and everything happening in Georgia, check out our calendar of events at BeerGuysRadio.com. Follow the Beer Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I believe you have my stapler. Now, back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. And welcome back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We are here at Orpheus Brewing in Atlanta, Georgia. We are uh, drinking some good beer, some oh, yeah. spontaneous fermented oh, yeah. one, two, and three year blended beer. The, yep. This which is, our... is uh, it's an American wild ale, but very similar to the Belgian goose. It's, we brewed it with that process, basically. Okay. Right. So, and blended to try to get that. Uh, actually, the main thing I was actually blending for was to get that right hop, aged hop character cheesy hop and that bitterness that's kind of distinct from most other sour beers very cool it's very yeah, that, tasty yeah that so. funk comes through um it's really tasty i get a ton of pineapple on this um you know that's maybe just me but uh it's really really yeah this makes thank me you happy. so this is yeah. this, this everything lasts forever nice everything lasts forever nice when are we going to see the bottles out on this one uh when it carbs so you know okay. traditionally goose will take um a year for the bottles okay. to, you know to sit and carb um, this is our first blend like this, and we, so we had, we had some process changes, you know, every year that we did a new beer. So the the gravity differences year to year aren't quite the same as they are in like you know Cantillon, where they can you know just trust that 
your gravity is going to drop a certain amount every year right. in barrels. So they've done it for a few we're, more years. We're, yeah. <laughs> so we're we're going to prime the actually add a little bit of sugar to get some carbonation from that and let and ex, do expect some carbonation though from the different aged uh, barrels. So, but I mean, it could be six months, it could be a year. We'll see. It's it was ready originally when it's ready, right? Yeah, when it whenever it's ready. All right. Well, we talked briefly about arts. Mm-hmm. arts stuff and as we're sitting here in your barrel room you have several paintings on the wall uh, very cool a good variety of artwork oh, yeah but actually it, most of the stuff in here is from uh monthly events that we do okay orphism well, which orphism. is we yeah. just uh bring a painter in generally um occasionally other types of artists but usually a painter and they'll just paint in our parking lot if it's nice out or painted in the tasting room if it's not nice out and uh so yeah that's you know they sell them these are all for sale directly from the artists um so yeah it's you know we it started with the the labels and then just you know we just want to do more and more with the artists because that's you know that's the fun stuff you stretch beyond just the painting you know with the orphism events that you do here the live painting events uh you have uh chamber cartel i know that Mm -hmm. you were doing or are doing we did uh, we did a music series with yeah chamber cartel which is a contemporary kind of classical uh, music group that um fun stuff like four air raid four air raid sirens playing at the same time in the tasting room it's quite an experience yeah and you do uh Shakespeare on draft. Oh yeah, Shakespeare that's awesome! Here, and right? you would not believe like yeah. our average attendance for that is like three hundred people really? to watch that's Shakespeare wild. in our parking lot. Okay, well, you right. know, and it's funny because because the Shakespeare, of course, it, you know, we feel like it's a big erudite uh, thing these days, but it's back body in the day. exactly. It's, Bunch of drunk people. Sure. Yeah, it's totally appropriate in a brewery parking lot. With the, the fun thing about Shakespeare on Draft, which is, I mean, we have nothing to do with them except the fact that they contacted us to do some shows here. But all of these are like single performances that they get ready for, and it's, yeah, just one time thing. They learn all their lines, they do all the rehearsing for one performance. Which so, is, do they do it uh, traditional, or is it a little you know modern spin on it? How do they do that? I mean, they do it pretty traditional yeah. but you know that it's in a brewery parking lot you know and that right. always affects you know th- there's not drastic set changes yes. you yeah. know it's yeah. they've used we we brought our uh our scaffolding from inside that we dry hop off of we brought it outside that became uh juliet's balcony okay you know so <laughs> it's right. even if you know the lines don't have chain it's just you know it's it's where it is. Yeah. You work with what you got to work with. Yeah, right? kind of impromptu so, in a really way, fun. but uh, but yeah. That's I kind of cool. wondered if that was like the drunk history show that they have on cable. If <laughs> if they drank while they were performing and got progressively more now, inebriated. They should, I think, take the TOS challenge. <laughs> Yes. Prior to putting it on there. So, oh, that's a good idea. The, for yeah. those in Atlanta, you know the TOS Challenge. Oh, of course. Unless yes. you're Aaron. I, I, I know it now. He's, he knows it Sorry, about, so. yes. That's but no, a, Jason's beer, the, the TOS Challenge, is you just you drink a six-pack of Transmigration of Souls just yes. as quick as you can. And Transmigration of Souls is a, is a delicious double IPA, but it also clocks into what? 10%? 10%. 10%. It'll knock you on your butt if you're not careful. Where so. did that start? Because I'm aware of it, but I'm not sure where it began. You know, uh, find out. Dig up and see what start you can find out. Yeah, find Yeah, fine. There's got to be, yeah. you know, find first occurrence source. of yes. Transmigration Challenge on Reddit. Definitely. The challenge. <laughs> the challenge, yeah. Probably yeah. Dak Jack. One that guy. guy. Yeah, that <laughs> guy. He's, one he's of those, terrible. One right. of those guys. So uh, what's coming up for Orpheus, man? We've talked about a couple of them here, mm. but what, you got new tanks, so we new have, beers? All right, so we have all right, lots of new barrel-aged beers. Actually, we are in kind of full just all hands-on to get ready for the anniversary, which is end of May, Memorial Day weekend. We're doing eight bottle releases over the course of four days. Which will be nuts. Yeah, good yes. luck. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so lots of barrel aged beer coming out. But also, we actually just installed three new tanks, uh, smaller tanks for you know smaller projects, tasting room, limited release. Um, so we have we have a wild IPA going in. Actually, we put that into one of the tanks before we even had glycol hooked up. So that's Kiss of the Earth, uh, brewing a cream stout on Monday. Okay. Um, have a barley wine coming right after that have like over and over and over which is a extra pineapple plus vanilla version of over and over 
Um, yeah, lots of fun, smaller stuff coming out that we, we couldn't really do before when we only had big tanks. Right. Very yeah. Cool. So, and, and yeah. you know, and again, we talked about the, the law change here in Georgia and it's that you're able to kind of play a little bit more and do some smaller batch things uh, in the tasting room and do some smaller releases now that, that we're able to kind of, again, the, the crazy idea of actually selling the beer that you make. Um, yeah, no, it totally it. justifies a whole different, way more fun approach to brewing. Yeah, so you're not just cranking out the uh, the core stuff that you need to yep. get to the distributors and all that kind of stuff. Sure. So. That has it. It's changed the way you brew with being able to sell here. I mean, do you have you changed the way that you brew your beers? Um, no, um, it's. I mean, the way we approach it, which I mean, that hasn't changed until these new beers and all the and all the barrel aged releases that are coming out. That's really a result of being able to actually sell our beer differently. So, I mean, these 25 barrel tanks. I mean, we're talking about new releases every couple of weeks. Right. And yeah. it's. I hate when that happens. I spilled a little bit, so it's okay. We got a little gushing beer. I got a little, gushing, a little gushing beer over there, huh? Yes, it happens. I'm looking forward to this one. It happens. That's. Uh, but, you know, it's something we see. Uh, we see breweries, I think, next Friday here in Atlanta, we have like four beer releases, you know, ju- just in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, we're seeing them from brew pubs and stuff because they can, oh, yeah. you know, they can sell now. So for the brew pubs, you know, it's a big deal uh, to go in and get some beer to go packaged. So it is, and it's, it's something where we as consumers just have so many more choices and so much mm-hmm. more we can take with us. And it's really like the difference in the beer coming from places with a mindset of this can be a small release. Um, you know, it can even, to a certain extent, not have to be as shelf stable as you know. We we have to when we when we come out with a core beer. One of my primary concerns is what's this beer going to taste like after three months on a shelf sure. in some random store right. in who knows where, and that's unfortunately has to be part of the equation because you know those people buying beer need to get good beer too. Sure. So, but you you can. You can play around uh, quite a bit more with, you know, small releases at the brewery, um, beers that, you know, you really want to be drunk fresh where you know that, well, I'm only selling 40 cases of this direct from the brewery. I'm controlling the beer the whole time until it, until it gets to the customer. I mean, that, that makes a huge difference. Yeah. And, and again, like I said, the control is good. So, I mean, if you make a fresh beer that needs to be drunk fresh, you know that you've got the right environments to keep it correct. Mm-hmm. And, and you know that you've got the dates done. It's not sitting on a shelf for six months exactly and it's you know it's like we're, we're going to be bought, canning a lot of these smaller releases you know 40 80 cases whatever and it's you know can't do that if you're sending it to distro right right something something unique for your customer something cool for you to do mm-hmm. very cool well jason thanks so much for joining us chatting with us tell us all about your beers and sharing your beers so if folks want to know what is coming up next from Orpheus, what's the best way for them to stay in touch? I mean, our Facebook, face, what is that? It's just Orpheus Brewing Everything. Facebook, Instagram <laughs> is best. Where our website, up? I'll admit, I don't update our, update our website very ah, well. It happens. But, it happens. yeah, That's Facebook right. and Instagram is always best. Very Super. cool. Awesome. Jason Pella, thanks, thank you. Jason. thanks, appreciate it. Thank you. All right, Tim, uh, we've got a giveaway to give away. We do, and our winner for this week is Les Wright. Les, thank you so much for subscribing to This Week in Georgia Beer. Drop us an email to beerguys at beerguysradio.com, and we will get you out a very cool Georgia Beer swag pack. And, Aaron, if others want to join in the fun, get the scoop, and be entered to win very cool prizes, how would they do that? Well, it's easy. Just go ahead and visit BeerGuysRadio.com. Sign up for This Week in Georgia Beer, and Tim does an awesome job compiling what's going on in the state of Georgia. You get a weekly newsletter with all the happenings, and you'll be entered to win our weekly swag pack. Coming up next week, we're going to be on the road once again talking to Steady Hand Brewing, and they are out of Atlanta, Georgia, so we're going to talk to them and see what's going on in the world of Steady Hand. Check us out at BeerGuysRadio.com and on the socials all week long. We'll be updating all sorts of information. And don't forget to drink local. Cheers. <laughs>